Welcome to this special edition podcast, Going Beyond the Iron. I'm Rusty Dunn, along with my Caterpillar colleague, Lisa Miller, my longtime colleague. Lisa, it's great to have you here doing this together. Rusty, thanks for having me. I love this. Let me ask you something. It's okay, so it's a beautiful day. You're in your convertible traveling down the road. Uh oh, you see a sign ahead that says construction delays are happening. How do you feel about that? Well, as long as there's Caterpillar equipment, I feel pretty good. But typically you're thinking, oh my gosh, really, I'm gonna have to stop for this work on the road? See, you're absolutely right. The chances are you're gonna see cat machines on the side of the road, but what's the one machine most construction sites have on there working hard, and more than one usually? An excavator. Absolutely. Right answers all the way along, I love it. We are uh, devoting this first special edition podcast, Beyond the Iron, with something that's a, really a flagship product for us, but some people may not know a lot about, the excavator. And you learned a lot about it too as we went into this. We sure did. We found some of the best experts on our excavation business here at Caterpillar. And we decided, okay, who are two or three of the people you really need to talk to when you talk about all things ex excavators? but can come at it from different ways, be it operating, history, uh, the development. And we found three people. We sure did. You'll hear in this podcast from our corporate archivist who will really kind of talk about how we got into the market so quickly because a lot of our competitors had already been making excavators. So what was Caterpillar's game plan to bring this product to market quickly? We'll also talk to a worldwide product manager for our large hydraulic excavators who will talk about excavators of today and tomorrow and where the market is going. But we really start this off in a fun way. You got together with a guy by the name of Ryan Neal who knows that machine inside and out and he really took you for a tour around the machine and, and how it works. He was really enlightening and really speaks to the technology that you're also finding on these machines to make them smarter and better for the operators, our customers, and make a safer job site. All right, let's get to it. Ryan Neal joins us today and he is a North American product application specialist for excavators at Caterpillar and Ryan, we are at the Edwards Demonstration and Learning Center just outside of Peoria, Illinois. Thanks for joining us. Tell us where we are. So we are at uh, one of the meccas of Caterpillar, uh, the Demo Center at, out in Edwards. Uh, it's 720 acres. We have two buildings at are indoors. It's February right now. It's cold. We had a snowstorm last night. We're able to do this inside in the warmth and we can dig dirt. We can run a D11 to a 336 to our 390s indoors to keep our customers warm and, and out of the elements. And it, it's a great asset to have this time of year. Now you've been at Caterpillar for 13 years. The bulk of your time has been out here at the Edwards facility. You're an operator at heart. What's it like when you get behind the cab or inside the cab of one of these? Well, it's a lot of fun. Uh, like, like you said, I, I was a senior demo operator here at Edwards uh, for nine, almost 10 years. And before that, I ran excavators for a living and that's how I fed my family out there in the dirt working for contractors. And then in this role I'm in now where I'm helping train and teach of what this product can do and how we help sell it and how we market it against competition. Uh, it's really fun to get in and see the hard work of the engineers and all of the voice of customer that we've been getting over the last few years to build this machine and see it to all come to fruition. It, it's really neat to get in and actually pull the levers and see it all work. You spend time with our customers. You've been one, right? You said that you used to use these when you were a contractor. What are some of the top questions you hear from customers about our excavators? Uh, one is it, this, one of the simple things as far as the operator in mind is uh, how do we get them more comfortable in the cab? And we redesigned our 336 and all of our next gen machines have a brand new cab and the comfort and visibility and the creature comforts. If you're in these machines for eight, 10, 12 hours a day, it's nice to have some creature comforts such as being able to plug your phone in and charge it or or Bluetooth, you can Bluetooth in your phone, hands-free phone, like in your vehicle, you can click the button on the joystick and answer your phone remotely. And it, just some of those creature comforts are, are great because it is, 
it, it's your office. I, I don't have a computer in front of me. I, I sit in this with these joysticks and I move in earth, but I have to be comfortable. And if you're comfortable, then they're more productive. You mentioned Bluetooth and, and that kind of a feature makes me think of safety, right? Where the operator's not touching his phone while he's trying to operate. What are some of the other key safety features that our engineers have really built into these machines to make these operators safe and the job site safer? Yeah, so it's been awesome with this launch. Uh, we, we've got these new features are in our in the machine that are standard on all of our next gen non-GC machines. They have what we call eFence. And basically what it does is we can create this dome around this machine and physically stop any part of the front linkage, the boom sticker bucket, from entering any one of those points. So if we were to track forward by that wall and I wanted to make sure that I couldn't stick out and hit that hit the bucket into the wall, I could reach out there, turn on what we call E wall, which will physically prevent the bucket from going there. Same with swinging. If I was swinging left or right, we can stop the machine from swinging any other direction. And one of the other great things we have is, it's an option, but 360 degree cameras. So the new cars today that you get in and you can physically see all the way around the machine, we offer that in these machines as well. So four cameras and the job site safety, and you think of a utility job when there's laborers over behind the machine and then there's trucks pulling up on the other side and you can't see anything. And when you have full visibility all the way around the machine, it, it's, it's a super safety conscious uh, effort for us. It totally makes sense. No one wants any injuries on their job sites. Um, something else I'm sure that operators and construction companies really think about is that efficiency that they need on the job site. So can you talk a little bit about how our machines are driving that and maybe specifically that cat grade control that have a lot of customers excited? Yeah, so we talk about efficiencies and the job of a contractor is they want to get paid and they want to get paid faster, right? And so the sooner they get the job done, the sooner they get paid to move on to the next one. So if we can give them the tools of the machine to be able to dig down to their, their desired elevation and grade quicker without having somebody in the trench, uh, you're, it's safety and it's production at the same time. It's less time for the laborer to be down there and physically checking grade. And if the machine is gonna give you all of that indication, and then we also have the assist where the operator just has to stick in, then it's usually one pass and they're done. And if previously it's the laborer checking, then it's a pass. The labor checking, then it's pass. You're making three and four passes, when today it's down to one pass when you get to your final grade. And it is, we, we talk to our basement diggers that use this, and they usually have a guy with a laser and a grade rod at the bottom of the trench, and that, those days are going away. These guys are one man bands, and they can go to the job site and dig the basement by themselves, and they're getting it done in, in half the time. And the, we, we talk about up to 45% more. Uh, job site or operator efficiency and it's hundred percent true. The coolest part of the job is when you when you go to the dealers or you go talk to the customer they see this machine and, and they, they tell you the stories of I burnt half the amount of fuel and I got the job done twice as quick and you get the goosey tingly feeling because we've worked really hard to give them that and, and when they're doing it and it's they're actually seeing the rewards of it, it it's really fun it's it's that aha moment for that customer when they're like this is gonna work and, and I'm gonna get more things done with it. It's got to make you feel so proud too, you know, proud for the company you work for and, and your involvement in it. And I'm sure there's a lot of pride on that customer being able to complete that job site faster. Yeah, I mean, one thing that we've heard when, when we launched these machines in 2018, the salesmen, when we do sales training for a thousand salesmen, they have been so excited because we have such great features and the best excavator we've ever had and all the tools to sell. We've, we've made great excavators forever but we have so many different things to offer today that the salesman can go to almost any contractor in any application and say, we've got something for you in this machine and it's standard. And yeah, it's, it's really fun to see that and see the salesman really excited to have a product to sell. Well, I'm sure another piece of the technology that those, those, the sales forces out there talking about is our cat payload. Can you explain a little bit about what that is and really how is that driving success for customers on their job sites? Yeah, so this is probably one of my favorite features on the machine because when I do my training to the salesman, I ask them what size excavators load trucks? And you'll say, you'll have, oh, a 390 or a 336 or a 320, or, and, and the, the, the answer is all of them load trucks. And it doesn't matter whether it's a, a 312 or a 390, everywhere in between they load trucks. And you think about the guys that are digging footings or digging basements and they have to haul the material off. They put it on a tandem or a semi and they drive on the road and they can only have so much weight in that truck. And if they're overweight, they're worried about getting fines from scales. And so if we can prevent the operator and the, and the owner to not really 
overload, but not underload. We want to maintain that desired payload of that vehicle that it's getting hauled off on, then we're gonna save on fines. And if, if they're worried because that the portable scales are out and they're putting five ton less on that machine and they're hauling dirt all day long, that's five ton less in every truck. And that adds up in the end of a day and end of a week and they're losing a lot of money. So if we can put the system on there and keep track of how many trucks they loaded that day in tons per hour and tons per gallon and total bucket loads and, and, and the total tons that were moved that day, the machine is keeping track of all of that. Contractor can help bid, they can help quote, you know, they've got all this data that we're giving to them and, and it's, it's really, really utilized and we hear great stories, it's extremely accurate and it, it's gone over really well. And we're, we're tickled about it because it, it, it's really a feature that all excavators do, they all load trucks. It kind of makes you wonder what's next. You've got all this great technology on these machines now. I mean, I'm sure the future is limitless. Yeah, I mean, to, well, one, we're just gonna continue to make the product better, uh, more accurate and quicker and quicker data and you know all the off-board data that we have. Yeah, and, and what we have, this machine that we have is electronic over hydraulic, so the capabilities are unlimited. We have remote controls for these machines and, and line of sight we can put a remote control kit on this and no operator in the cab and i can stand a couple hundred feet away from this thing and dig and not worry about something falling in on me and to keep the operator out of harm's way and it's that's just the beginning of, of where we're going you've talked a lot about the efficiency at the job site thanks to the technology on board these machines what else has caterpillar really done to help contractors lower that owning and operating cost that's so important to them? Yeah, a lot. So one of the main things is contractors don't want downtime. They want their machine to run and continue to running. The less downtime they have, the more productive they are. So we've done a lot of different things with, um, for one, we've, we've changed the maintenance intervals on quite a few of the things in the machine. Um, the air filters, for example, we have this uh, pre-cleaner built into our air cleaners now that it's a standard feature and we're doubling the life of that of what we had in the previous F-Series. So if they were getting 500 hours out of that air filter, theoretically they're going to get a thousand hours out of it. And we've done that to several different things in the machines. Um, a lot of them, now I said these machines are electronic over hydraulic. Before they were pilot controlled, meaning we had hydraulic lines run all the way under the machine, up into the cab, up into the operator's joysticks. That's, in some instances, that's over a hundred foot of hydraulic hoses and it's hydraulic oil that was needed to do that. So we've removed that, it's electric now, and that's, that's been a reduction of 20% of the hydraulic oil in the machine. We don't need all that oil because we don't have as many hoses. And, and when you have hoses and fittings, you potentially have leaks and things like that that we've done to help keep the machine running all the time has been great. And one of the other things is these machines are electronic, very similar to your iPhone. We have a lot of technologies in these and we have updates, we have software updates, just like your phones do, they, they can push it out. We have the same services where we can remote flash in new software to the machine from the dealership to the machine 200 miles away. We can also remote into the machine to check uh, if there's any, any uh, activity going on, if there's any warnings or anything going on. We can see that from the office. And, and those kind of capabilities to be able to remote troubleshoot or push out software remotely is gonna save the the dealer time is going to save the customer money from having to have the dealer come out and spend time and downtime. We've Cust done a lot. Customers have to be thrilled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If their machine's running, they're making money. Well, you are clearly excited about these excavators. So thank you so much for your time today. We've, we've learned a lot. I have certainly learned a lot more about excavators today thanks to your expertise. Lisa, that had to be a great day. I mean, you're not just standing next to the machine, you're in the machine with the guy who knows everything about it. What what else from that, that day strikes you with that excavator? First of all, Ryan's expertise really is yeah. second to none and his passion for the products we manufacture at Caterpillar, but specifically the excavator, is really his pride and joy. And what I really thought was interesting is when we really got into that safety discussion, the features that we have built into these machines, not only to make the operator safer inside the cab, but anybody around that machine on these job yeah. sites where there's lots of people and moving pieces, it's we've really done a great job to make that whole site safer. Well, and why we're being frustrated being stuck in traffic as you're seeing those machines operate, it's something you don't appreciate unless you're on that work site and on that machine. You're absolutely right. So get us in 
to a little bit of the history of this thing. As I mentioned, this was a fairly fast track that we were on to make the excavator happen. And you talk to the guy who knows all about it. As we had mentioned before, you know, 95 year history, I had just assumed we had been making excavators since we became a company in 1925. Right. Lee Fosberg, our corporate archivist says, no, really it's a relatively new product for us. And the amount of time we had for research and development, just a couple of years and brought it to market was really amazing and a testament to not only our engineering teams, but our marketing teams here at Caterpillar. Great, let's hear from Lee. Lee Fosberg, Caterpillar's corporate archivist, joins us today from Mossville, Illinois, home to Caterpillar's corporate archives. Lee, can you tell us a little bit about where we are today? I can, and thanks for having me, Lisa, by the way. Um, we're in our corporate archives. Everyone asks, what is a corporate archives, right? Well, it's you know a collection of materials that you know tells us a little bit about the history of the company. We have things from paper records, which really make up most of the collection. We'll tell people we, you know, we have six to eight football fields of, of paper records, but we also have like over a million photographs. We have 16 millimeter film. We even have an antique machine collection of like 25 items that are many of them over 100 years old. Um, but it's really kind of all stuff that goes back to, that tells the Caterpillar story and kind of adds value back to Caterpillar that we've been doing this longer and better than anyone else, so. Your knowledge about the company and its people and its products never ceases to amaze me. You know, you've only been here almost eight years, right, this right. year, mm -hmm. and the, the knowledge you've amassed is just mind-blowing. What was mind-blowing to me is when you and I were talking about doing this podcast around excavators, I had just assumed that we had made excavators since 1925 when we became a company. But you're like, no, it's kind of a newer product sure. to our product line, which I just couldn't believe. Well, you know. Seven or eight years ago, I was no different than you. I would have said Caterpillar had been making excavators for a hundred years, right? Um, but really, it is a relatively new product. Um, and its roots go back to the 1960s. And they really go back to Europe. And these machines were used on the European continent. And there were American machines that were made, like for example, a company called Bosiris that we purchased in 2010 made them, but they would kind of partner with other companies. They partnered, for example, with a company called Rushton. Um, and this market kind of popped up really quickly and it was cat people on the ground in Europe that were seeing these products and they were like, why are we not making these, right? Um, so CAT did a little bit of investigation, did a study, and they saw, right, there was money to be made with this product, but there was an obstacle, right? And that obstacle was we weren't like the first, the second, the third in the market. So how can we come to market quickly and how can we make something that's superior that people are going to want to get and give up like these other competitors? And that was the challenge they had. But in caterpillar fashion these amazing engineers absolutely use research and development in almost record time to yes. create this product right yeah I, I mean it really was i would say this is an engineering story and this is a marketing story and that's kind of how the company saw it so they actually created two task force and this hadn't been done before um, and then actually this kind of strategy you would say was was used then later down the road to bring to other things to market the first task force was really an engineering task force. It was people that kind of came up with the ideas of how we could build our machine or design our machine. How can we make it different than our competitors and how can we manufacture it, right, in a quick time period and a high quality. The second task force was a, a marketing task force and how can we market this machine and, and essentially make something that's going to be sold at you know a very high level. And they did in, they, in they just did, a couple of years. They did. Well, you know, and so the work in 1968, the work you would say kind of began. And you, you had a study that was completed. You had testing of kind of raw kind of prototypes. You had the creation of the first model that was actually done in the tech center in Mossville. Um, and then by 1970, you had these prototype machines and they were 
they were put into use in both Europe and the US. And then people kind of, you know, right, they were viewing this, these machines, they were seeing how they worked. Um, but what they kind of learned was a lot of the excavators that were out there, not all of them used hydraulics or hydraulics in a way that were critical to the machine. So that was one thing that Kat noticed, right? Um, and they having the hydraulics and having a, like a real sensitive touch, you could work around like, let's say you had a construction site in a city, you had to work around like pipes or stuff already existing in the ground. They needed to provide that to an operator. So one of the big technology things that they introduced was the joystick. Now there were other machines that used joysticks, but they weren't kind of at the precision of a cat joystick. So we totally eliminated the, you know, the use of um, having to use these cables to run these machines. But a kind of another little interesting story that, you know, is right, there weren't kind of the technology out there to have like the hydraulic hoses that could take the beating that you would have on the job site. So we actually went into the business and started making our own hydraulic hoses, which you know worked not only for the excavator, right, but we had other pieces of equipment that used um, hydraulic hoses. And those at one time were manufactured right here out in Mossville too. Sounds like there are quite a few things on our machines that really differentiated us even yes. then from the competition. Yeah, absolutely. And those, those were just to kind of name uh, a few. But one of the things I think that's kind of fun too is like with the marketing people are like, how could we differentiate like the style of our product to make it different, right? And they worked with like also industrial design on this. But one is like, you know, we take for granted now, right? We know our machines, they're the, the famous, you know, the cat yellow, right? Well, these machines were the first ones where the undercarriage, which I always tell everyone's like, right, the tracks down, um, were painted in black. And that was like the first machine that had actually the black tracks, right? Where we had like our like our world famous dozers, right? They still had the yellow tracks. So it's it kind of a funny, this is like a great story, I think. You know, in the archives, we always tell people, which I'm sure on a certain level, they they get sick of it, right? But you know, you know, artifacts tell great stories and great stories inspire. This is that story, right? Our artifact is our machine, right? And the story that it's telling is the story that we tell today. It's, it's cat people, it's innovation, you know, it's, it's technology, and it's being a leader. Because what happened is when between 1968, right, and 72, we jumped into that mark with our first machine, which was the Cat 225. For the first year, we only had one machine on that product line. But very quickly, we became the worldwide, the worldwide leader in Hexus that we are today. And it became almost immediately profitable, you said. Oh, absolutely, right? And every year they would add on to the line. But, you know, the, the hex, the, I think the 225 is probably what they would say the equivalent today is like kind of more your medium hex line. But they made larger and they made smaller equipment. So you went from kind of like stuff that we would say that would work on construction industry today, but the stuff that would work on mines. And you, you see this stuff all over the highway, you know. I'll always have people tell me, like kind of our enthusiasts, right, the things that make them proud is, they'll always say like, you know, you're driving down the freeway and you see a hex on the back of a truck being pulled to a job site. So it's almost become as iconic as the, the what we call like, was the track type tractor or the dozer today. It's kind of almost to me more the, you know, like the modern machine that you see is, is Caterpillar. Lee, we spent a lot of time talking about the importance of research and development and how fast we brought this product to market. But where did the customer play in? How were we seeking out the voice of the customer? Or what were they saying about what they needed these machines to do? Sure. Well, you know, this is the same story, too, with when CAT came out with, what, the D9, the D10, the D11. You would test these things, like we talked about, on site. And, you know, you would arrange with the dealer, and the dealer would put the machines onto you know, our customers' work sites, and then you would get feedback back from the customer. And these little things were introduced within the machine. Um, you know, probably things like the joystick that we talked about, where we would know that they needed this precision and they weren't being supplied that from other people that they were using on the job site. So that became a real critical part of this and really kind of a really kind of approach that we take probably with machines up till today. You said a lot of times the pride people feel about excavators can be found driving along the highway with an excavator on the back of a semi or a truck bed going somewhere to do some work or some project. What are some of the big projects we've seen our excavators be a part of? 
over the course of history. Sure. Well, you know, the one thing I'll thought, we actually know the first, you know, which a lot of our products, right, we don't know this, but we know the first product that this worked on. It was actually in Mexico and it was called Plan Benito Juarez, which was like a, progr a program of like bringing irrigation to an area, you know, where they wanted to grow crops and provide reservoirs and, you know, and things like that. And this product became a very critical part of making that happen. And it was a project that went over a long length of time and it, it, it became a project where we were selling not only these excavators, which were critical on the job, but other pieces of CAT equipment. Do you have any takes on some business lessons from this kind of experiment? Because this is an experiment that worked, right? Sure. Not all experiments do, but this is mm -hmm. one that was really successful. Right. Well, right. It's, I think it's an experiment of success of process and strategy. And I would say that would be proved because a little over 10 years later, we came out with our first um, backhoe loader, the 416. And they really mimicked, in the, it was kind of the same story. Other people had come out, competitors, competitors in Europe with machines before us. So how could we mimic this to make that machine uh, a success? They went back to the 70s, right? And they mimicked this process, they created teams, and they thought by these people working together closely, bringing engineers together, we could roll this out. And in the 1980s, that was a success also. So. Lee, thanks again for sharing your knowledge. Thanks, um, I think a lot of people learned a lot about excavators. I know I did today, too. Anytime. Rusty, what I found most fascinating about my conversation with Lee was the fact that we were able to design a product and bring it to market so quickly because we had those two work streams figuring out how to design the product and then go to market with it. And it was so successful, we did it again a couple of years later for the backhoe. That was really a template or that sort of set the structure for how we can do that for other products. Very, very interesting. And he's, Lee's got a treasure trove of stuff there, doesn't he? Yeah, well, he's, a, he's a good guy. <laughs> he's a good guy. He is. Well, we talk about how the excavators revolutionized the way we move earth and how it was an extremely important innovation in the construction and mining industries. So you always ask the question, what's next? What's the next generation look like? What will an excavator look like and do? And how will it function 15, 20 years from now? Well, we found the guy to talk about that, Brian Abbott, who is the worldwide product manager for large hydraulic excavators. Despite a 14 hour time difference, I caught up with Brian, who was able to chat with me by phone from Singapore. Well, Brian, it's great to talk to you. And if we're talking about excavators, you're right in the middle of it at Caterpillar. Welcome, thanks for joining us for this conversation. You're welcome, Rusty. It's a, my great pleasure to be here. Well, first of all, what's your primary mission, Brian, as worldwide product manager for large hydraulic excavators here at Caterpillar? I believe my primary mission as one of the three product managers for Caterpillar's excavator business is to ensure that our customers can be more successful with a Caterpillar excavator than they can be with any other brand excavator. If we do that, focus on the customer and, and make sure he or she can have a more successful business with our machines than anybody else, then the rest of the important things relative to my job, like financial results, will flow naturally. So we really try to keep it focused on the customer first and understand that if we do that the best, we'll make the most profit at the end of the day, too. Now, alongside that, as you get day to day, of course, there's lots of things that a product manager focuses on. We are responsible for the design, the development, the manufacturer, the go-to-market, and then the eventual product support of the machine. And so there's a cast of thousands, literally, including our dealers that are involved in all of that. But it's the product manager's role to make sure at the top level, all of that is coming together in a way that ensures in today's time, we have a product that is high quality, best in class cost, and for sure, best in class value to our customers. And then a big part of our job also is is looking out to tomorrow and, and making sure that one, three, 10 years down the road, Caterpillar is going to continue to be number one in excavators by making sure we have the right models for the future, the right features that are going to continue to make customers more money in the future. 
also look at how we can bring out new applications, new markets for the machine. So I believe it's one of the best jobs within Caterpillar. You get to deal with dealers, with customers, with suppliers, and of course, all of our great internal Caterpillar team members. So I love the job. Talk a little bit about how excavators, how the machine itself really revolutionized construction and mining sites around the world. And someone who may not be familiar with the excavator, the machine itself, other than driving by it, perhaps, while they see it working along the side of a road or at a construction site, probably don't appreciate what that machine is really doing. Maybe just touch on, Brian, how it really revolutionized the industries we operate in, construction, mining. Yeah, and and the excavator really has brought a whole new level of productivity and efficiency to our customers, be them construction customers, mining customers, demolition customers, material handling customers. All of those customers use excavators in their daily role. And it's that production and efficiency gain over other types of construction machines that really has, as you say, Rusty, revolutionized the business for our customers. The excavator is such a important tool to our customers because it's such a universal tool. The machine can dig, it can lift, it can handle a multitude of work tools, different bucket sizes, hammers, grapples, shears. There are tools called a quick coupler, which allows the customer to change amongst those tools literally in in just a few minutes relative to having to get out of the cab and take hours to change a tool. So that universality is what brings a lot of value to the customers today. You know, back in the past when the excavator first came out, you know, the hydraulic excavator came out at around the 1920s. And when it came out as a hydraulic version, it really introduced to the customer a whole new level of power. And the machine is a machine that has a lot of power, but also can dig down several meters deep below ground. So it's that ability to be able to dig down deep and still have a lot of power that allows an excavator to bring some unique value to customers relative to other machines like a wheel loader or other machines that may have been used in the past. And yet the speed of the machine brings an overall efficiency to the customer that they cannot get with other tools There's also track versions, which are machines that that we see most of the time operate on a steel track, but there's also machines operate on on rubber tires that you see quite a bit, especially in Europe, which brings a whole different level of mobility to the customer. I remember when I was district manager in in Munich, Germany, working with our Caterpillar dealer Zeppelin there, and uh, dealer principal of Zeppelin, Michael Heidemann, would make the comment to me on a regular basis as we talked about excavators that, you know, an excavator is really the Swiss army knife of the job site. And I think that really captures it very well as to the value of that machine. If you think about your Swiss Army knife and you know, you've got your three or four different blades, you've got your corkscrew, your screwdriver, your pick, the hex is the same way. You can do so many things with it and so many tools on it that it really is a machine that the customer can use all day on just about any job site. Brian, talk a little bit about our what we call the next gen line, the next generation of excavators at Caterpillar. And we began introducing those here, what, a couple of years ago, maybe maybe less, sort of the next gen hacks. Maybe talk about that and what makes those excavators truly next generation. We introduced our first next-gen hex in uh, the fourth quarter of 2017. That was the 320 model, which is our highest volume model and the the most ubiquitous model you see around the world. The first thing that makes it so exciting for us internally, and I think for the customers too, is it's the first real machine MPI that we have done in over 10 years because with engine emissions around the world, whether North America or Europe, Japan, and now even China, we, we've had to spend the last 10 years focusing all of our R&D effort just on keeping up with the various air emissions and designing new engines into our products to do that. So we're now at a point where we current with the emissions of the engines, and there's nothing new out there that came at us in, in the period of 2017, 2018. So we can really, for the first time in a long time, turn our efforts towards a new machine platform for our customers. That's the first thing that makes it exciting. Is It's the first time in over 10 years that we've brought out a new machine platform. The second thing is it is such a new platform that for us, it's the biggest change since we, we launched the 200 series excavator, which was way back in the mid 80s. So this machine is 30 years of revolution in that kind of a scope. If you think back from the 200 series to the 300 series and the updates here. So it's, it is a lot of new content that brings a lot of value to our customers. So that's some of the things that excites us internally. If we get to what's really important for the customer and why do we really think this current Caterpillar excavator is next generation, as we call it, 
there's a couple things. The, the first thing, and I think the most important thing that makes our latest HEX next generation is the electric hydraulic system on the machine, which is really the brain of the machine and somewhat the heart of the machine, too. If you think back about excavators, back in the 1800s, you had steam shovels. Then we, we moved quickly to cable-controlled excavators. And then around 1920, the hydraulic excavator came out. And that was, as I said before, revolutionary because of the power and the efficiency of the hydraulics relative to cable. And we've been with hydraulics since the 1920s until now. And we have controlled those hydraulics through what's called pilot hydraulics. So this is medium pressure oil running from the joystick commands down to the valve to tell the valve what to do. With electric hydraulic, we move from hydraulic control of the valve and the pump to electric control. So instead of a pilot line running down from the joystick, there's now wires running down from the joystick going to the valve, and we're sending electric pulses to the valve. So that's the technical part. What's that mean for the customer? It means we are able to control the valve, which is what directs the machine and all the other components in the machine, with a lot more speed and a lot more precise control, which leads to efficiency. So we're able to tell the machine much faster what to do once the joystick is actuated, and we tell the machine a lot more finitely, you know, have the pump do this much more tightly, or have the engine do this much more tightly, or have the cylinders do this much more tightly. So it, it's that electric hydraulic implementation that really makes the machine next generation. And we are the first ones to bring electric hydraulic across the entire line of excavators. We had it in the past on our largest machines. Others maybe had it here and there, but with the next gen, we have brought it across our entire line of excavators globally. That's one of two things that I'd say are next generation, Rusty. The other one is the integration of technology. So now if you look at an excavator, it's still doing the same basic things I talked about. It's lifting, it's digging, it's grading, it's operating different tools. But with the next gen machine, we are taking to market new technology features that, again, allow our customer many advantages, whether it be higher productivity, which is the biggest advantage, or the ability to utilize less skilled operators, which is a big thing in our industry today. Our customers pretty much globally tell us they have a hard time finding operators as our industry is struggling to to get young kids enticed to want to come out and, and work as construction operators. So opening up the pool of lesser skilled operators through technology is a big thing for our customers. I'd say those two things, when you ask me what makes a next generation, first and foremost, it's that EH control system. And then secondly, the integration of the technology. Put into perspective for us how popular our excavators are in, in terms of uh, sales. So assume that they're among the top selling machines. Um, yes. Okay. yes, that's right. They, if you want to look at it by machine family, so excavators, wheel loaders, motor graders, for example, trucks, excavators are by far the highest selling machine type of model at Caterpillar. And that would be the same, I would think, for just about every of our competitors at will that are the high volume competitors. We sell about two and a half times more excavators at Caterpillar than we sell of the next highest machine family. So, yes, as you said, they're by far the highest volume one. I'm amazed as you travel the world how many different ways our customers like to dig a hole. And, <laughs> right. You can get pretty creative, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, and the machines they use to do the, you know, to dig that hole are, are so different as you go around the world. But the one thing you can always count on is no matter where you are in the world, you're going to see excavators being used. So not only are they high volume, but they're very global. You know, every That's one of the best things about, about being an excavator product manager is every Caterpillar dealer wants to have you come visit them because excavators are such an important part of each dealer's business because, again, of that ubiquity and the volume. Well, not that you have a, a crystal ball, Brian, but where do you see the excavator business going in terms of the innovation, the technology gains that we'll want to continue to make, not just a, a five years out, but 10 years, 15, 20 years, you know, sort of that question of will, will an excavator look like an excavator? And I'll assume part of the answer will be, well, you still got to you still got to dig earth up to, <laughs> to build things. I agree with you that 10, 20, 30, even 50 years from now, the excavator is going to look the basic same it does today. Because as you said, the, the machine still has to dig, it has to lift, it has to grade, it has to be powerful yet efficient. And we don't see anything around that basic functionality that, that's going to change in the next 50 years that would say, well, what I see today in, in the visual is going to be a whole lot different. We still think in the future, you're going to have a hydraulic excavator that, that looks about the same. Now, within that, there are going to be, we think, two significant changes going forward. The first one is around electric and electrification of the machine. And the second one is around automation and autonomy of the machine. Just go back to that opening 
discussion around the versatility of the excavator. You know, it does so many things and so many applications and so many unknowns every day that to try to automate that is really hard because it's just not a consistent pattern like a truck or a compactor operates in. So we don't see full autonomy coming to an excavator in a significant way for many, many years yet, but automating more and more functions, yes. So that's why I think you'll see, you'll continue to see a cab on the machine even for a long time. We talked about maybe a, a cabless excavator, but in my opinion, the operator is still going to have to be involved in some way for uh, a lot of time to come just to help the excavator get out, out of those unknowns that may happen day in and day out. Well, Brian, mark it on the calendar. 50 years from now, <laughs> you and I will revisit the excavator story and see how much progress we've made. Exactly, and how, how accurate we are. <laughs> Brian, thank you so much for the conversation and helping us tell Caterpillar's excavator story. Best of luck to you going forward. We look, uh, we can't wait to see what the future brings. Thank you, Rusty. It was a lot of fun. I really appreciate the opportunity. So Brian Abbott could teach a class, Condelius, a Cat Excavators 101. What a great um, perspective and a great guy to talk to. So much knowledge there. But doesn't this give you a new appreciation for when we're stuck in traffic, maybe feeling frustrated, we see those machines operating, those excavators, but the men and women who are making them work? It's amazing the amount of skill that it takes to operate those machines with such finesse at the level of safety that they do. They're yep. very safety conscious people, which is key when you've got that large job site and the fact that they're so efficient with this equipment. I don't think people stop and really appreciate that enough. No, and there's so much more out there. I'm, I'm sorry for this special edition podcast. We're almost out of time, but I think there's more if we can get it. There is. We actually talked to Ryan Neal about his career as an operator and the discussion he's having right now with his own son about what am I going to do with my life? Am I going to go to college? Am I going to go into the trades? We hear from Ryan in a web extra, which you can find at caterpillar.com forward slash beyond the iron. I love it. Lisa Miller, so much fun. Thanks for hanging out and getting some great stick time with the uh, with our excavators. It was a really great day with uh, Ryan Neal and Lee Fosberg. It was. For Lisa Miller, I'm Rusty Dunn. Thanks for listening, everybody, to this special edition podcast, Going Beyond the Iron. We'll talk to you next time.